Hello, you're very welcome to Jerry's DIY. Now, the last time I had anything to do with this boiler stove project, this thing, <laughs> hopefully it works, um, I damaged my eye. So today I'm not gonna risk anything. I wanna lift that bottle, this propane tank, out of this oil drum. And we're gonna do it now. Here we go. So if you haven't been here before, start now by subscribing and click on the bell notification. Thanks very much, so that you don't miss anything. Now, if you've been here before and you're already a subscriber, <laughs> the numbers are growing, I don't know why, but thanks very much for, for sticking around. Uh, it's great having you here. Okay, so we're gonna lift this bottle out of that stove and I'm not gonna use my hands, allegedly. Now, I'm gonna risk my garage door, my shed door, uh, to do this. I thought I'd give it a shot, look. Hollywood moment or something. Anyway, here we go, look. I'm gonna lower the door. Actually, even the mechanism on the door is something I knocked up. <laughs> it's a homebrew effort. Uh, I'll show you that in a few minutes. But for now, look, I want to use this door to lift that bottle out of this tank. I don't know what that weighs. Um, the contents are 47 kilos. That's 47 times 2.2 pounds. But anyway, it's heavy. And um, so the way I'm going to do it is this. Look, this is the old valve out of this propane bottle. There it is. This is a tow rope, <laughs> you know, get me home rope uh, for a car. So. As it happens, that just happens to fit through the, um, the hook on the, ball, on the tow rope. So I'm going to screw that in here. So now we have a threaded connection. And literally, I'm going to tie its ass to the door. Now I have another camera outside, so maybe you can see some of it uh, on that. So I'm just going to wrap this around the thing on the outside of the door. We're going to hit the button. And hopefully, I don't pull the whole thing down or bend the door. Here we go. So I'm literally just winding this up. Okay, so this, this is my up and down mechanism. This was an engine hoist or some sort of a hoist. And um, I just put a wheel on the end of the, you know, the, the top of the door and I wind it up just by hitting that up. Anyway, here we go, look. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, I thought it would just pull clean out. I didn't expect it to be hanging out of the door. Okay, so that's interesting. All right, don't do this at home, folks. All right, everything looks reasonable. I think what we do is uh, hit it with something and get out of the way. Now, the problem is it's hard to find something because I've burnt it all. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Okay, so here's a small piece of something. I just don't want to damage the, the cylinder. And I definitely don't want to damage the door. So let's give it a light, light wrap of an axe. Moved it. That's only aluminium holding the, the bottom rail on that, that door. So I'm just ready to get out of the way. Boards are giving out. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure you saw all that. Um, anyway, look, I used this axe to drive it down. It's obviously a tight fit, which is why it needed a bit of persuasion. Um, persuaded. Okay, I welded on a two mil flange, two mil thick and about an inch wide, all the way around this. And the idea of that is I could put some sort of um, fiberglass rope, which I have here. Here we go. So I can put this fiberglass rope around it, you know, like this, and it squashes, and that gives me a nice airtight seal between this contraption and this one. So there's my oil drum with a hole big enough to accommodate that propane tank. And I'm going to drop it back in now. It was just to show you the setup. Oh, and I found some stuff in there as well. Okay, here we go. So here we go, we've got a gap between the propane bottle and the oil drum. And we're gonna put some fiberglass rope in there and I'm going to stitch it together. There's a bit of fiberglass rope, I don't know, roughly four feet. Okay.
Right, now just let the surplus come out and I just zip that. So we'll just drop that down a bit more now. Okay, good enough. So the garage door, I don't recommend you do this. It's rough and ready, but I'll show you the setup. This was an engine hoist for about 30 or 40 uh, euro dollars, whatever. And uh, it's got a steel cable, which is here on the top. That steel, steel cable travels up. And if you can see red things at the end of the door there, what they are is I got two wheelbarrow wheels, put them together, and then I screw them to the side of the, the door. So when the door rotates, the wheels rotate as well, independent of the, the edge of the door. And then I threw the equivalent of a rope over it. And when I pull the rope, it turns the pulleys, which in turn, or turns the wheelbarrow wheels, which in turn brings up the door. And as I release the, the wire, the weight of the door brings it down. So that's it. <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, but you know what? It's better than the old chain I used to have. So there you go. Quick, um, quick door mod. Okay, so I'm going to connect the two items, the, you know, the propane bottle and the oil drum. I'm going to connect them together with some tech screws. So what I'm going to do with the tech screws is I'm going to drill them every four inches or thereabouts all the way around. So we get one in and then I'll, I'll work out spacings. But um, anyway, some earphones and some, uh, some safety goggles. Now, I don't expect anything. This cylinder got me before, so respect. <laughs> okay, so let's try one near you so you can see it maybe. So if I try tightening through this top hole, what happens is it parallel threads and tries to keep the same spacing. But I don't want that. What I want is for it to go through the top one, no problem, and pull in through the bottom one. So I'm just going to drill that one size bigger. Right, that's only the top one. So it's going to drill into the bottom one now and be able to pull itself down. Like that. Okay, so we have to do that with a couple of them now. Well, a few of them. Here we go. Just quickly do them all. So in order to test my boiler stove, this Franken stove, which is my main source of heat for the shed, this is, um, is brilliant. You can see how hot it's been getting. This was a thousand degree centigrade paint and it went, I don't know what it was, maybe $10 a can, 10 euro a can, and it just disappeared. So I might as well have just thrown the 10 euro in the air. So when I designed this stove, I wanted something that would maximize my heat output. And I've done that. So when the, when the burner is lighting, the, the flames travel up, hit the bottom of this, and splash sideways, left and right. They then go into these cheek pieces, which are about five inches wide, in through here, go sideways then in through my six inch flue, and then up and out into the atmosphere. But on their way up, this is single wall flue as well, and again, more heat, you know, laterally through the flue pipe. Now I'm only taking this out so I can do my other burner, which is currently in production. <laughs> Okay, it's a waste oil boiler stove, um, allegedly, we'll see, but that's, that's the plan. And after this one, I have another one in mind, but it's going to be some, from something that's already been fabricated. I'm just going to re-engineer it. But anyway, look, let's take this out. It should be as easy as whacking this. Okay, we're disconnected. The oil on this side is already disconnected. I did that a little while ago. That's my oil tank, the two connections on it. Anybody asking or anybody spots it, the lower one is just to drain off water and any crap that gets into the contaminants in the oil. But I filter the oil now before it goes in there first. So it's a, just an added safety measure. Now, this thing isn't overly heavy. I should be able to lift it. Okay, so. Now I suppose, you know, when I say not overly heavy, this thing landed on your foot, you'd know all about it. Here we go. Now we'll just take out the old flue. It's only pushed up there with some packing. There goes the packing. And that's it, clean enough. That's six inch stainless steel flue. Okay, just put this out of the way for a minute. Now, I set this stove up to run on 5 inch. Um, maybe I hadn't got the 6 inch at the time, I don't know. This is great quality stuff, this will last for years. I've actually got this on my, my boiler stove in the house, properly manufactured boiler stove. 
not these Mickey Mouse things I work on. Okay, here we go. Let's bring this down to it. Okay, as you can see that, it's off by, I don't know, three inches I'd say. I was probably right the first time. Okay, so let's drive them over a bit. So I've got the Franken stove disconnected, it's over there. This thing now is just a big oil drum, propane bottle, and we're gonna light a fire under its ass in here. Okay, so what's gonna happen is my little waste oil burner unit is gonna go in there. It's gonna be fed air from the far side of this. It's gonna, and it's gonna make a lot of flame. It's gonna hit the bottom of this thing, and it's gonna be the very same as if you're boiling your, your pot with eggs in it or something. What's gonna happen, the, the bottom of this is hovering over the flame, the, the very same as your pot would be in the house, you know, in your gas cooker or something. So, this is one of the oil burners I, I made before. I've made quite a few burners. Lots of them didn't make it to YouTube. But anyway, look, this one, or one like it, is gonna be under the, the bottom of this. We're gonna force feed it there. Um, and we're gonna get a burn on the go, now a clean burn. The fumes and all the rest are gonna go between the wall of this and the outer wall of the drum. It's gonna travel around the back. Whoop, and it's going to go up my flue. That's it. So, and because we've got a big pot of water, massive pot, I don't know what it is, three and a half, four feet high, um, full of water, it's got to get hot. Now, this is far from the most efficient way of making hot water. But you know what? It'll make a ton of hot water and it'll make it for free. You know, just some waste oil. And two or three litres an hour, which is what my burners work great at. Um, you know, they, they produce a lot of flame, a lot of heat and this will have to get hot. I'll have a thermostat in there, I'm sure we can shut off the, the, um, the water when we have 60 degrees, and further down the road, I'll make a much better system on this. But for now, anyway, look, crude, two items, one of my waste oil burners, and a blower in this case. It's not gonna be normally aspirated in this one, and it's gonna make a ton of hot water. There you go. Now, if you like the video, please thumbs up, subscribe down here, <laughs> thanks very much. If you're already a subscriber, there's more than 35,000 of us now you know, who are interested in this sort of stuff, which is unbelievable. So look, thanks very much. It's absolutely brilliant having you here. Um, and that's it. I'm going to leave it there for now and leg it. So bye for now. See you all in the next video. Thanks very much for dropping by. Good luck. Bye.